Tuesday, May 24th, 1966. This course on the Bhagavad Gita. We were discussing the direction of Sri Krishna to Arjuna to put forth self-effort. He said, raise thyself by thyself, because thyself is thy own friend, and thyself is your own enemy. Therefore, you should exert yourself. You are your own friend, you are your own enemy. So beware what you what you do. Here is the necessity for taking initiative in spiritual life. Buddha said the Tathagata, Tathagata means one who was uh, expected to come. You yourself must make an effort. The Tathagata can only give you help, directions. Initiative must come from you. There is a Buddhist saying or a story. One Buddhist monk or Buddha himself was meditating. And there came a traveler uh, towards that direction and he sat near the meditative Buddha. Traveler asked Buddha the certain directions how to go there. Buddha did not say anything. And afterwards the traveler got up and began to walk. And Buddha gave the direction, not this way, go this way. The traveler asked him, why did not you say before? So at that time I was not sure you will exert yourself. In the same way, the first initiative must come from a spiritual aspirant. That means spiritual aspiration has awakened in him. There must awaken spiritual aspiration for one reason or another. Until that aspiration has come, come to such a degree that you long for it, you seek a path, then nothing can be done. How to awaken that aspiration is a different thing. But before real result begin to come or anything can be done, this spiritual aspiration must arise in in us. Otherwise, it, it is not a casual thing in a dilettante fashion to do thing, ask for a thing. To Ramakrishna came a person, he said, can you tell me how to get samadhi, what, what people speak about? Casually, as it, what they speak about samadhi, can you tell me how to get it? Ramakrishna afterwards should make fun about the uh, anxiety of that man to get samadhi. In the same way, is there a, just as how to get meditation, can you tell me? That must be a real problem in your, own, in your life. Why to, to meditate? Uh, what the ne need for meditation? It may come in a positive way, it may come in a negative way. To most people it comes in a negative way. We are not satisfied with what we find ourselves in, in a negative way. Most people come in a negative way. Few persons who come from the beginning, that positive aspiration, but most persons come in a negative way. They are not satisfied with their environment, with what they are doing, and so on. Shankaracharya and Vivek Turami, the Christian of discrimination says, there comes a time in the life of a person who is uh, just uh, intensely want to get out of it, and just as if one feels uh, one is in a, a state of uh, burning fire. That means intensity is so great. Surely one does not know the way out. Surely one does not know whether there is a goal even. 
But one, this much one knows, this is unsatisfactory. That feeling must come, more or less. When you find here it is okay, God will see you, it is okay with you. If Adam Krishna would uh, speak uh, of a uh, person who was an orphan boy, struggled hard to get education, he got education, and afterwards became uh, a uh, very important person at that time to become a high court judge in Calcutta was considered very important. He became a high court judge. And afterwards, in his old age, when he had good experience of the world, and he said, what have I done in my life? The God said, what you have done, you know, what you have done in, in, in your life. That person had not the aspiration. He, was, he felt that it was all right. God said it is all right. But that state must come uh, to a uh, degree, certain degree. Some, I know uh, some saint uh, who would not give any, any, just to talk, would not talk about spiritual things. Even if you ask him question, he would avoid, just sp speak of other things. Highly spiritual person would be talking of other things, but not speak of spiritual things so easily. He himself said, first the use of wasting breath, they won't do anything. It is simply discussion, idle discussions, just like discussing newspaper news. So he would not say anything. He would keep people waiting and waiting and waiting. And thereby intensity would increase. Then he would say a few words, not much. And he would watch if they follow these things into practice. If they follow, perhaps of his own accord, he will give further directions. In certain cases, he himself gave directions to persons. And those persons did not, at least I know of a case. He was not aware. And the saint asked him, come. And he gave the direction. And he was surprised. And the final direction he was giving. Perhaps he was watching his behavior, his actions, and he found uh, his fitness. Usually, he would not give directions, he would not talk about, about spiritual, uh, spiritual things. Not that he was indifferent to the spiritual welfare of others. He was. He would, he would watch. But what's the use of speaking to those persons who have no interest? So here it may, uh, Gita says, that you must, that interest must come. It is, uh, uh, it is certain. One cannot uh, raise, uh, uplift oneself in spiritual life. But one can have the desire. One can have the, have the yearning. When there is yearning, the help will come. The help is bound to come, they say, if you have the, if you have the yearning. Uh, it is said that eyes were created because there was sight to see. In the same way, when there is yearning, it is bound to come. Seek and you shall find. This is true. Christ said, you do not ask in my name. Ask the Lord in my name. That's a greater help. You have to ask. Shankaracharya said that the debt which has been left by the Father, the Son can pay. The burden which you are a load, which you are, you are carrying, some other person may take it away from you. But if you are hungry, you 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 uh, yourself will have to eat. If you have a disease, you will have to take the medicine yourself. In these things, there cannot be any uh, power of attorney. There cannot be any representative. In the same. Uh, uh, in the same way, for spiritual things, you will have to, you will have to try. You will have to try, not try in a casual sense. It must be uh, the part of your being, that aspiration. Then the result will, uh, then the result will come. You, ha you have to uh, 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 strive. A great saint was asked, why don't you do something for us? Uh, I understand you are so powerful spiritually. 
He said, I can give you, but you'll not be able to keep it. She was lift up a person to a state to which it does not belong, he'll fall down. And she said, therefore it is better to strive. And it will be, uh, it will be jo great joy in striving too. When there is a difficult thing, you wrestle with it, there is, jo there is joy in it. A great scientist said, if I am thinking on a subject, if I get the result, immediately I don't feel joy. When I struggle with it, for the discovery I find joy. But the important thing is, even if our pitch fought to a height, we cannot keep it there because we do not know. Some years back, for 20 or some, in Af Afghanistan, the king, real king was uh, uh, ousted and a servant was put in there. Uh, uh, and the servant did not know what to sleep, what to do. It made a mess of whole thing. So you must have the qualification. Even if you give a throne, uh, uh, you cannot keep it. So even if you are given spiritual high state, you, you, cannot, you cannot keep it. Even the disciples of Ramakrishna were the realizations given by Ramakrishna by touch or by look. But even then, had to work very hard. An important disciple of Ramakrishna, after, his pa after the passing of Ramakrishna, did hard spiritual practice. Another saint and a very holy man asked him, did you Ramakrishna would love you so much? He gave you so much? But why have we to undergo all these things, austerities? And the disciple said, no, to become established in that thing. It is necessary. So even if you are not, uh, 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 even if you are given, you cannot, you cannot keep it because it, uh, you, do not belong to that, you do not belong to that state. So, so much emphasis is, 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 is given that you should exert yourself. This is also true. Our efforts are not sufficient by themselves. But after all, we shall know when, when we come to the uh, end of our tether, when we come really to the end of our strength, then the strength will be renewed, strength will be eternal strength, will be, uh, will be supplied. But that's a different thing. Let us not uh, from say these things now. For the time being, it is necessary just to exactly forget all other things, forget all high-sounding high words. Just coming to, to meditate, at once let us know what happens and what happens in Samadhi and all these states, big things. These things uh, 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 have no meaning for you. One step enough for you. Take that step. Know the step, what the step is. The first step is you must put forth, be ready for hard struggle. Or put forth all your energies. Uh, you cannot have a divided attention if you really want spiritual progress. You can have something or mm, uh, just uh, suspending the time. But that earnestness must come. The greater the earnestness, uh, the speedier the progress. So it is emphasized so much yeah. uh, and that uh, on self-exertion. We are discussing that for those persons whose mind is not trained, work is the method. But those persons whose minds are trained and who have reached the goal of yoga, for them work follows. Then the next topic of discussion here is, what happens to those persons who have reached the goal of yoga or meditation? How do they behave? What do they see? What do people see? from outside. This is described. In Gita, four or five times it is described. What are the characteristics of a person who has known the highest truth? It was described in the second chapter. What, is the, what, are, what are the characteristics of a man who has uh, re uh, realized, who has attained perfect spiritual tranquility? Then the previous chapter, it was described what happens to a person who has got the self-knowledge. 
in this chapter it is described uh, what are the characteristics one will see from outside. A person who has reached the goal of yoga or the goal of meditation. This chapter is the yoga of meditation. What happens when one has succeeded in meditation? One who, who, who has, uh, whose meditation is uh, complete, fully concentrated. One who has reached the superconscious state. What happens? What one, does one see from outside? Such a person has conquered his lower self. Lower self means body and mind. One has complete mastery over himself. Himself means body and mind. It is said the man who has conquered himself is much more powerful than a person, than a military man who has conquered thousands of uh, persons. It is such simple thing, one person, you conquer yourself. It seems easy, but it is so difficult. A person might be very, very great general. He might have a great victory, but he himself is a coward to himself. In his family, he might be found to be a helpless person in his private affairs. But in the case of a person who is adept in meditation, he has got complete mastery over his body and mind. In the sense that he knows he is separate from his body and mind. He has reached, uh, he has gone outside the body and mind complex. That is what happens. When mind becomes perfectly concentrated, mind becomes different. No longer it is mind. From that standpoint, mind is the source of ignorance. When you have complete mastery of, of ignorance, Ignorance is completely gone. You have got the self-knowledge. That is called, what is called, the mastery of body and mind. He has gone outside his mind, and mind is completely under his control. About Swami Vivekananda Swami Tuirananda said, to Tuirananda Swami Vivekananda himself said, my mind is like a clod of earth. I can do whatever I like uh, with it like to do with it. That is, that is what happens. He would make it's an experiment. Sometimes you would be uh, meditating on a black spot. It's impossible to meditate on a black spot, on a black point, just to be. And when he, he, his mind would uh, at once be uh, easily concentrated, and its spiritual experiences would be coming. Usually you speak, you, uh, you choose a spiritual subject. But he has full con uh, control over his mind, and therefore, uh, therefore he could he could uh, uh, do that. Now the perfect control over one's mind it happens, and one feels one is separate from his body and his mind. Therefore, one does not feel afraid of death. Nothing. Absolutely uh, 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 n n nothing, no. Not, no question of fear, no question of any responsibility left behind, nothing. One f or to speak in a devotional language, one knows God is behind everything so much, one does not feel any responsibility, nor one does shirk any responsibility. So long as one has to work, one knows one is work working as an instrument in the hands of God. One is not in a hurry to go. One is not tired of this life to go. Every, just supremely uh, uh, indifferent to these things. One is completely free from the shackles of body and mind both. Don't say it's a pessimistic thing. It's a glorious thing. One has found out that one is bliss itself. When the mind becomes perfectly concentrated, one becomes one with the bliss, completely. What Buddha said, nirvana. Nirvana means highest, highest bliss. Buddha did not talk of God, but he talked of meditation. And when you are perfect in meditation, that thing is bound to come. 
that is common thing to all spiritual aspirants when they reach the goal. Common thing is unalloyed bliss. One becomes identified with the bliss. One does not enjoy bliss as an object because one has no mind separate from oneself. Or one has become completely identified with, with bliss. It becomes difficult for us to understand because we have not risen to that high state. But that is what happens. One finds, the, at that time, one uh, say the world is different. Don't say, these people say the world is an illusion. This world which has a rela reality with us, for which we exploit others, we, we, for which we speak any amount of lies and any amount of, uh, any degrees of crimes and all these things. With us, the world is reality. And with these people say the world is an illusion. Yes, with them the world is an illusion. They found out some hard reality. Reality, embodiment of bliss, which will not change anymore. They found out thing by getting which they would not aspire after any t anything else. Such persons are really serene, extremely calm. Here people are all worried, anxious, lacerated. But so, Persons who, have, who have, um, persons who have become uh, perfect in meditation, they're extremely calm and serene. But more than that, we say calm and serene, it is a, a speaking human language. They have, the, the waves of their mind have become completely subdued, completely calm. The mind, waves of the mind have become calm. The surface of the liquid is completely calm. There are not ripples even. That is serenity with them. That is real tranquility. Buddha said, empty thy boat in order that you can go quickly. In the boat there are many un un unwanted things, encumbrances. Because of that heavy load which I unnecessarily carry, we cannot go quick. The, the mind does not become controlled. We do not make any spiritual progress. There are so many things. The heart is cluttered with things. Not only unnecessarily unwanted, the disturbing things are there. So uh, these are the obstacles. The Buddha said there are five obstacles, something like lust, mal malice, doubt, sloth, and, and so on. Usually, this desire anger, hatred, ambition, jealousy, and so on, all these things are there. So you say, empty thy boat, then the boat will go quickly. So the, uh, they have become calm, that means their life, their mind, is, uh, their heart is freed from all this unnecessary or just hostile, just disturbing encumbrances. So the life, uh, heart becomes very calm. It is that perfect meditation means making just like the surface of a lake without any waves, without any ripples. And ripples come because of all these things, disturbing things. We know when, when, when you become worried, some unfulfilled desire there, getting angry with other, resentment against a, a, another, or jealousy, conscious or unconscious, envy, and all these things come. How can you have meditation when these things, when you do not uh, root out the cause of the disturbance? You indulge in envy, you in indulge in ill will, you indulge in fault finding, and all these things are constantly going on. And at once you can actually sit in lotus po posture. I can sit in lotus, lotus posture for two hours. Any amount of uh, lotus postures uh, will not help you to control your mind. Get uh, rid of these things. It is true. Meditation helps to do these things, and, and you uh, get help for meditation when you have control, when you have uh, 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 cultivated ethical, uh, ethical qualities. So for those saints, when it is said they are serene and tranquil, it is not like ordinary tranquility of a person. It is that they root out the cause of disturbance in the heart or in the mind. All these things are gone. 
and therefore uh, they are extremely tranquil. That tranquility can no more be, no longer be disturbed, because the root cause is gone. The wind that blows and disturbs the lashes on the surface of the lake is silenced. Christ said silence and the storm uh, uh, subsided. When the disciples were afraid, the saying that storms, and he said, you have little faith, why do you fear? Then he said, silent, and the storm was, uh, was, was si uh, the storm was silent. They have the silence, the storms of their mind, and it will never rise again. Think of that person, how tranquil he will be. Tranquil is a human word. It is much more than tranquility. It is eternal calmness and the abode of eternal peace. One will not fall from that state anymore. And that state means it comes when you, have, uh, when you are established in the state of your higher self. Or you are in this established in the knowledge of the self, your reality. You have found out your found out your reality, that the, the tranquility is so, so uh, deep. I, I do not like to use the word tranquility, though I cannot uh, use one word. But one has found out how to answer of peace, eternal, eternal peace. That means one has known his real self, and one has the, no, one has known the source of all knowledge, the source, the fountainhead of all knowledge. Such a person has not to learn step by step through books and through persons. They have reached the fountainhead of all knowledge. Therefore words of wisdom flow from their uh, lips and they silence uh, scholars and pundits and what, what not. It can be really found, and it is really found by great, by great saints. So Sri Krishna was saying, these things happen. And the result will be indirect, the result will be, one will be found, one will be unaffected by heat and cold, or honor and dishonor. All these things are trifling things, children's plays, children's toys, which, um, because of toys, children weep, because of the toys, uh, those toys, children become happy. One is not affected by these things. Even to become, to become very realistic, if we say that even a saint sometimes feel uh, cold, they require a blanket, but even sometimes they might feel a little uneasiness, but at once then keep the, take their mind off from all these things. A saint I know, he would say, it was very hot uh, uh, climate in that place. He said, let us meditate. You see, he will, if you meditate, then uh, he would not feel, uh, feel the uh, heat. That's an interesting thing, but get rid of uh, heat. You do not require any air conditioning. You will find the source of peace and calmness within you. <coughs> they are not affected by by ordinary things. So Vivekananda said, I have seen the truth. Am I to be disturbed by the children's battles? Some persons are saying the, some opinion on other things, he, he said. I have drunk of that fountain which makes reason unreason, the world zero, immortal and immortal. Yes, in some of his letters I find sometimes he's disturbed by all these things. Depends on what plane at that time he was. Such a man can stay in uh, any state. But if he like at once, he, he can get rid of all these things. He could, I've seen, in one day, written two letters, I was amused. From one letter one could find that he's so much disturbed. How could he be so much disturbed? The same day, on the same day, he wrote another letter. That I feel so peaceful. 
it happens sometimes some works, some pers uh, pers uh, works went wrong, he scolded some persons or something happened, but the next moment he, he is uh, different. His brother disciples would say, it seems Sean Vivekananda was, but no, he was so serene and calm and compassionate. Eh? Even the scold, the, the scolding does not come from their heart. Inner self does not disturb, become disturbed when one has realized that state. Inner state does not become uh, disturbed. They are not affected by these things. They might be scolding. Uh, harshest words some people could use. He could coin many interesting words of scolding uh, to Indians in the whole, as, a, uh, as if he was whipping the whole nation as it was. His language was sometimes so powerful, strong. It is said in his, in his presence, even a dead man would come to life as it were. He could use words which could bring a dead nation as it were to life. He did, he did that in the way he was saying. And such was so powerful he could, uh, he could use such harsh, not harsh, uh, it's a combustible words he could uh, use. But it, it in itself was not uh, uh, disturbed, would not be disturbed, would not be. And such a person has perfect control over his senses. No longer senses give any trouble to them. Such and they live in a state of great peace and joy, inner joy. These are some of the characteristics of a person who has reached that superconscious state, who has gone beyond mind, as they say. Let us stop here. Anyone is welcome to ask any question. Yes. <coughs> would you say that the saint of whom you spoke, when he would give uh, spiritual instruction, he would wait until he could just say a decisive word, say something decisive for the person so that it would take effect? Is that what he was doing? Well, the different persons would do something, different things. In some cases, you would at once uh, receive him. Eh? And extremely kind, unusually kind then it will be difficult to get him for the next uh, occasion. It was not given interview. We'll have to seek. We'll have to seek and seek. You don't find an opportunity to see him. But even if you find an opportunity to see him, he will just avoid the issue as it was. And in that way, he would increase the intensity of the person. One would feel that as afterwards when you see and you compare, one feels as if uh, one, he would do deliberately. He would deliberately he would do these things. And he would not, uh, and if asked any spiritual things, he will uh, just avoid that question. Uh, and that he will be doing. It was his plan. And he himself said, to one person said at the railway platform, it was interesting thing. He went uh, uh, to East Bengal for some uh, tour at some, uh, at the invitation of some devotees of people. One person, a uh, boy, uh, served him also, so, they were waiting at the platform uh, for the train. He himself said to him, and it is recorded by him, he said, usually I do not talk very much about spiritual things. And I say these things to follow it, will get benefit uh, in that. But usually would not. Uh, there are some, many persons have come and seen me talking other things, and uh, they would be disappointed. Some persons are disappointed, would go away. But not that he was unmindful. He was extremely. But he was fine. Just uh, one must go with a real uh, interest in the spiritual problem, not intellectual discussions. Simply one would go with really the spiritual problem. It would be the problem of their uh, hearts, not simply uh, uh, 
casual co uh, question. <laughs> yes? Well, the reason I was interested is that this is the same advice that a military captain... Oh, don't bring in it. He said, what to do you? Why do you bring in that thing? Military, just don't send this thing. It's a spiritual thing. I don't know what the military advice. Don't bring such things. Yes? Swami, for many years, one has heard you talk about the characteristics of holy men. Yeah. And it seems to me that one thing is that they seem so perfect and to have arrived at something that's so difficult for anyone who's continually struggling, that they seem infinitely remote. What can one do? What is one one's attitude supposed to be toward these holy men? Yes, but if you meet them really, they are not infinitely remote. You'll find that so close to you. That is the interesting thing. When you meet them, and if you have spiritual uh, uh, potential for spiritual uh, yearning, you'll find surprisingly close to you. Surprisingly cold or close to you, you'll find. That is what happens. Extremely, at once, you'll be free. If you have that, I think uh, it depends on person. Some persons have found the extremely close. Uh, uh, no friend is so close uh, as they become. They can do that. Uh, that is, they can do that. You will be surprised. Uh, no, they are not remote. It seems remote because we uh, theoretically discuss things. What about their great compassion? Their life is such. What about that great compassion? Uh, about Ramakrishna. Uh, his disciples would say he was imp he was restless to help people. He was so eager. He said, "Young students uh, uh, came to his disciples. He would go to the school, not exactly the school. From outside, he would send someone to bring them, to talk with them. If a person would not come for some time, he would uh, just think why he doesn't come." They said the disciples of Ramakrishna said, "We are uh, uh, drawn by him." because of his affection, not for spiritual things so much. You know, and they're not a remote. To give instance, uh, one disciple of Ramakrishna, at that time he was young, very healthy, a school student of Palestine, 18 years old, less than that. He went to see Ramakrishna casually. He had heard that there was a great saint there. Uh, Ramakrishna kept him. Uh, Ramakrishna said, because he was very strong, he said, can you wrestle with me? Ramakrishna said to a, uh, the young man, because he was very healthy, they wrestled the one to food, and he pushed to, to the wall to Ramakrishna. And then, he went, when he pushed near to the wall, he felt always his, his strength failed as it were. Hmm. But Ramakrishna said, just like, uh, uh, no, my, my health is now bad, so you have done that. In any case, I just, the whole situation, he asked him to stay, and at night he would stay, Ramakrishna himself he just uh, he spread the mosquito curtain from him, and uh, that place was notorious, uh, was notorious for mosquitoes, and fed him well and kept him uh, and there. Just f f at the first visit, he became so much drawn to him, and th that ha happened with many, and it is not remote, th it is there extraordinary quality. They belong to a very high height. They can come down to the level of any person. That is there. No ordinary person can do that with an effort of compassion or love. That is the great quality. The great quality. They can come. It is not, not so just the opposite. But it depends on with whom how and why and what they did. Uh, it depends on us to that might be. And that I do not know, for all were not, eh? all were not interested in him. Sometimes two boys have gone. So one is interested, not another. Ram uh, Vivekananda, he said, so compassionate, he would bring his friends. Ram Krishna, why do you bring those be, things? They will have not the, in this life, they have not the potential or some such thing. In any case, but usually, you know, that is their great, uh, extraordinary quality. They can come down to any level. So the men of the boys, uh, young boys, have gone. And they have, at once they make, and they make no distinction. 
as a young boy or as a great um, devotee, a long-standing devotee. Well, nobody would feel that. All the disciples of Ramakrishna would feel, Latu, including Latu, that as if Ramakrishna loved him most. That is happened. That is what happens with such persons. Uh, everyone would feel so much. Let us stop.